cynically brought down and held back by Pablo Zabaleta. Chris Foy just giving himself some thinking time. Well, it's, it's a poor challenge from Zabaleta. Lovely skill from Oscar. He just grabs him. That's a yellow card. That is really... I wouldn't blame the referee for not showing it because we don't want one of those where all of a sudden, just because he produces a yellow for that type of challenge, he feels compelled to do it for others. So I think there's a fair amount of common sense shown there by Chris Foy, and I like that. But Zabaleta will be under no illusions. One more of them, and he's definitely in the book. I think it's a yellow card. <laughs> good enough. That's not good enough. Those two centre halves not communicating, not together. Brilliant recovering challenge from Branislav Ivanovic. Lovely work and run from Sergio Aguero, but too easy. Cannot allow that particular that player in particular because he is the difference. He does make the difference for this City team. Can't allow him to get in there, Clive. He's out for five weeks with a, a knee ligament injury. His third injury spell out of the team this season, Sergio Aguero, and Manchester City have paid for that. His goal tally is half of what he achieved last season. Yellow card for Gareth Barry. I think he did lose his footing slightly, but it was like a, an American football block, that. Where well, do you stand on these yeah. cup goalkeeper selections? Look, he might be six foot eight, but he makes himself five foot five if he tries to come and get it in that sort of traffic. He's giving himself no chance there. Just because he's such a giant, he doesn't really need to have to come and get everything. He's got some giants back there. This is that Chelsea defending we've seen. Ivanovic, great block earlier from Aguero. And we saw this little lovely little couple of give and goes, and it was Ryan Bertrand having to make sure that he denied Carlos Tevez. Really good. Great tempo, there's been some lovely football and some tasty challenges as well. I'm delighted that the referee has just let it go. Hey, Chopper Harris and Mickey Droy might have fancied a bit of this. It might have been a bit too fast for Mickey Droy. <laughs> uh, Chris Ford. Mario Toure. That's a thought about following him. Tucked in. Madrid! Manchester City take the lead, Samir Nasri. Ball ran sweetly for him. Everybody with Manchester City at heart celebrates apart from the manager. They're in front. I said Chelsea are probably feeling a bit happier. And then Yaya Toure decided to get himself really involved in the game and pick a ball up 10 yards into Chelsea territory and just put his head down and go and say, you catch me, you come and stop me. No one getting anywhere near him, it's a great pass. He gets a little bit of, a lot of good fortune. In fact, Sami Nasri, because he's trying to pass when really he should be shooting initially. But... Season. And that's his first goal since October, only his second since August when he scored against Chelsea in the Community Shield. And he's been on the fringes for a, has. two or three months, just got back in for the last couple of games and just started to show something of what Manchester City expected to get when they signed him from Arsenal. And he's back on the ball, the goal scorer, Samir Nasri. Run off it by Ivanovic. You know, Andy, when he played well against Newcastle a couple of weeks ago, Roberto Mancini said, I feel like punching him. Yeah. He should play that like that all of the time. Because, Clive, there have been too many of those Sami Nasri performances when he just was invisible. He didn't look, any, didn't look like he was interested, didn't look like he felt loved, wanted to be part of it. But when he played, but you know with this guy, I think Mancini questioned his stomach. He questioned the heart earlier on in the season. That's the finger he was pointing at that at Sami and Azri. and I think that's why you're seeing the performances and the level he's giving right now, because that hurts. It's the biggest criticism you can aim at any player, Clive, is that they're not giving it, they're not trying. A couple of headline moments earlier in the season which rather soured his relationship with Manchester City, a tetchy red card at Norwich at Christmas. Remember, he was the player who ducked on the end of the wall when yeah. Robin Van Persie scored that dramatic winner in the first Manchester derby of the season. They were difficult times for Nasri at City. Oh, 
Such a flair and invention about each side coming forward. Even more enjoyable if a few of the flair players out there were uh, <coughs> English. Well, that you were running at this sort of a bit to Been fouled by Toure, and uh, I think cynical enough to attract a yellow card mm. from Chris Foyt. Well, Yaya is saying that trying to plead his case and it's my first one, but seriously mm. derails the, any chance Chelsea had to counter there. That's why the card is shown, not necessarily for the nastiness of the challenge. It's basically a trip. But it's just all the initiative gone and now City can get back behind the ball. And Chelsea got ten blue shirts to get through. Hazard he was held back there by Barclici this time. Again, just interrupting the flow of Chelsea's attacking play. Get this in that six-yard box again. Let's have another look at this goalkeeper. That's what I'd be saying. Put it in there, put it in. Tough lad. And he's just brushed him to one side. Look at the numbers they've got in the box. That's a poor ball from James Milner. That's a really poor delivery from him. If he just rolls that back to somebody, they could add to their tally. Breathless, wonderful half of football. Just the one goal, could have been several. Samir Nasri scored it ten minutes before the break. Manchester City have maybe just edged it overall, but it does have the feel of a semi-final with more goals in it. Roy Keane, Lee Dixon and Gareth Southgate will be discussing it in just a moment. Chelsea nil, Manchester City won. No matter how poor Chelsea have been, we saw earlier in the earlier on the quarter-final against United, two nil down, they came out a different team. They do have quality on the pitch, so I think City will certainly need another goal. I can't see this finishing one nil because Chelsea, no matter how badly they played the first half, they still have quality out on that pitch. Well, it's really open, that's the thing. I think there will be more goals because City are attacking. I don't think they'll sit back on a one nil. certainly, and Chelsea have got to come out. I think it's a really good game of football. Of all the clips we've seen at half-time of the first half, the significant one seems to be that miss right at the end. That feels like a very key moment to me. If that had gone in, then it would have been game over at 2-0. Sure. Yeah, because I think you, you never have the sort of dominance that City had in that half over a full 90-minute game, especially against the team of Chelsea's quality. And Chelsea have threatened, you know, uh, there's several times where company maybe has got away with pulling people back, zabaleta has got away with pulling people back. Both of City's central midfield players are on yellow cards now, so they can't break play up as they might have done it earlier on. So. There's definitely hope with what they've got out there, and then with the likes of Lampard and, and Torres to come on as well, uh, they've got the ability to change the game from the bench. No changes at this stage, and uh, well, no sign of Man City whatsoever so far. They're uh, they're taking their time. Uh, they're taking their time coming out. They'd want more of the same, presumably. Well, I, th I think the, th the thing is with time for the second half. Let's rejoin Andy and Clive. It's a very different semi-final to yesterday's in many ways. I think the uh, Metropolitan Police are. Maybe quietly grateful that Manchester United didn't make it here. But whereas the uh, two semi. Tevez. Harry. Milner. Gareth Barry. We're over the header. What a week for Sergio Aguero, a winner in a Manchester derby, and now a goal in an FA Cup semi-final at Wembley. Well, they were two down and all second in the quarter final and came back, but it's a long way back for Chelsea now. Bound pass. What a poor ball. When you think, like he's been moaning about his front men all season, Mancini, well, they turned up this afternoon. These two have been an absolute cross clears everybody. So you've got the break in that one, Bertrand. Kevin Lewis has got a free kick now. Yeah. Hey! Short corner was played to Bertrand. He's just clipped it in there. You've got to wrap your foot around it. Put it in there with a bit of a bit of devil on it. It was a good innocent face for a Uruguayan defender, Pablo Zabaleta. In that by Aguero. 
Toure. Guerrero's made a run, held up by Ramirez. Toure just <laughs> bursting forward. A little flourish to feed Tevez. It's almost unfair when he uses his brute strength to burst past people. And some company couldn't resist. Here is. Maiden Hazard's come out on the right. And here's Denver Bar immediately. Absolutely nothing. Once more, Denver Bar just so such fantastic athleticism to just pop it in the back of the net. But how they get in so easily again? He's just peeled off the back of Nastasic. It's such a long, direct ball, and it just holds up on the surface, doesn't it? But he has to swivel and turn and adjust, and he does that so well. Gives the goalkeeper no chance whatsoever. That's a Another stunning goal to, for Denver Bar to add to his collection. So live. Another rash. <laughs> he was a beaten European Cup final captain here at Wembley 21 years ago. Sampdoria beaten by Barcelona and he took it out in the referee to the tune of a four-game suspension. We've seen those... Raps and raves in three years on English touchlines. And holding court again this week about one thing and another international friendlies, Manchester United's opponents. Here's Aguero. Them. Didn't know much about it, but <laughs> a lot of credit. A lot of credit for being there. Quick to pounce on it afterwards, but City on the ropes. You don't have to know too much when you're six feet eight. <laughs> That's true. He has played a couple of games for his country, Romania, since the turn of the year. Costel Pantelimon. He's conceded six goals in those two games. I suppose he's got plenty of practice. Reasonably comfortable with it. <laughs> he's not. <laughs> Life as a Manchester City fan in one picture. <laughs> Is there? Argentina meets Brazil. Just whether he's trod across him. David Luiz keeps his body in. Watch Aguero there. That's nasty. That's out of order. He's got no need to do that. It's a red card challenge. That he's jumped all over him with two feet there. He's extremely lucky to get away with that. Oh. That is nasty. How would he want to do that? I mean. Forget the Brazil-Argentina bit, his team are 2-1 up, there's like 10 minutes left on the clock, and he puts the whole game at risk with that. Magnus. Well, no card, and a smiling Chris Foy. I guess he's not seen that all that clearly, which might actually work against Aguero. If he reports the referee that he didn't see it, and the camera eye might... Judge the challenge at a later date. We shall see. Torres catches him, doesn't he? he catches him on only he, that's that sort of challenge. Only Fernando Torres knows if he's intended to do that or, or not. It's a nasty one, it's one that hurts raking down the back of your Achilles. It is a cynical looking challenge. And Chris Foy's had a great game and, and helped make this a great game, but there have been a couple of challenges in the last two or three minutes. Particularly the Aguero one, which I think if he'd had a really good look at, he might have dealt with a bit differently. Fans.